All right, the second example we're going to look at is this, and this is where we're going to use our calculator. Okay, and we're actually going to create a scatter plot based on um, this data. So, you know, if you want to pause the video, you want to go grab your calculator, I'd go grab your calculator. I'm going to show you um, with screenshots of my calculator exactly where you need to go so that hopefully you can put all this stuff in your calculator and you will have no problem uh, getting the same scatter plot that I will have. So example two says the Sanchez household is about to install solar panels to reduce the cost of heating their house. In order to know how much the solar panels help, they record their consumption of natural gas before the panels are installed. Gas consumption is higher in cold weather, so the relationship between outside temperature and gas consumption is important. Now before we dive in too deeply here, they kind of use a unit that is confusing at first, and it's this degree day unit that they're using. Uh, when you first look at this, you think, all right, well, 24 degree days. All right, well, what do they mean by degree days? One deg degree day is accumulated for each degree a day's average temperature falls below 65 degrees. Your first inclination is to think there were 24 days that were below 65 degrees in November. But then you look at December and you go, wait, there's not 51 days in December. There could be 51 days in December that were below 65 degrees. So here's what's really going on. It's 24 degrees below the 65. This, 31 degrees, is the average temp in November. Why they just, I don't know, they make it sound very confusing. But that's what's happening. So again, if we looked at the 51, you take 51 degrees off 65, and so the average temperature in December is 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, and then if you move on to some of the other ones, uh, like June, June is zero. So there were no days below 65 degrees Fahrenheit. In July, there was no days, not days, I said it again. Um, the average temperature was not below 65 degrees. In August, the average temperature was 64 degrees. Okay, so again, it's not the actual number of days. You take the degree day number, subtract it from 65, and that's the average temperature for the entire month. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a scatter plot of our degree days that cover over a year long period here. And we're going to look at the gas usage for every 100 cubic feet of gas that goes with each of those months. Okay, in the colder months, obviously you're going to use more gas to heat your house, to uh, heat up the water in your house. Maybe um, different appliances may use gas, like dryers may use gas, your stove may use gas, etc. Okay, so what we're going to look at first here is we're going to make our scatter plot by hand. So here I've already kind of set myself up here. I've got degree days and I counted by fives and I have gas usage and I noticed in my gas usage um, I you know have a min of 1.2 so I'm just saying let's start at zero here and my max is 11 and that's where I had to go I just had this perfectly set up to already kind of fit in for you okay so let's take our points here and we're gonna graph these just like we would points back in algebra 1 let me get a big enough point here. A too big. There we go. Okay. So for 24 degree days, we come over here. We're going to estimate. Here's about 24 degree days. And the gas usage is 6.3. So I'm going to go up and estimate uh, right there. There's 6.3. So there's November in our scatter plot. And we got December. Now notice December is 51, and I only went up to 50. So pretty much you can have that point hang over just a little bit. We're going to have to do the same thing for January, but it's okay. We can just have it hang over just a little. So 51, and we're going up to 10.9. We're about right in there. Uh, January 43, there's 43-ish, up to 8.9. We're almost at 9. Uh, February 33, up to 7.5. Let's say right there. 
uh, March 26 up to 5.3 we'll estimate right there uh, April is 13 with 4 so 13 4 uh, May we're at 4 degree days and 1.7 June is 0 we're at 1.2 now notice July and June have the same exact point. If you have two points that are the same exact point, you have to kind of make a key or make a special symbol that means you have more than one point right here. So what I'm going to do is, here's one thing I can do. I'm going to draw a box around that point. And then I'm going to come over here, somewhere off to the side, and do that same symbol there and say this represents a double data point. Just so you know that there are really technically two points there. But if I didn't have that box around it, then you would just think there's only one month that's there when there's in fact two. Alright, so let's get back. Okay. Uh, so technically we got July taken care of with that. So August we're at 1 and 2.1. It's about right there. Uh, September's at 6, 2.1. October we're at 12 and 3.1. Is it right there? Uh, November 30, 6.4. Right there we'll say. December 32, up at 7.2, we'll say right there. January 52, again, we're going to be hanging off a little bit, all the way up at 11, say right there. And February 30, uh, 6.9, we'll say right there. Okay, so here's our scatter plot we just made by hand. The good thing is, we can make the scatter plot in our calculator like we could with really most of our other graphs like our histograms our box plots etc okay so you need to have your calculator out go ahead and turn it on and the first thing we need to do is go to our lists so in your calculator remember you're going to go to stat and then edit and so you can see your list list one list two etc go ahead and clear out list one and list two remember you need to go Go up to where L1 is and L2 is if you have data in these lists. Go up to here, press clear, and then enter, and it'll wipe out all those lists. All right, so for list one, we're going to have list one represent our, a little bit smaller here, our degree days. And list two is really going to represent our gas usage. Okay, now. Just go down the line in degree days, start with your 24, and then work your way down to June. And then I'm going to pull this down. And then once you get down to June at zero, then keep going over here in July and do that entire list. And that'll all be list one. And once you got list one done, now go over to list two and start with the 6.3. And you want to make sure these are still side by side to each other like they are in your table. You want the 24 degree days to go with the 6.3, which is what I have right here as my first entries in both list 1 and list 2. So start with 6.3, 6.3, go all the way down, then come over here to the 1.2, and continue going down. Okay, so all of the degree days are in list 1, all of the gas usage is in list 2. Okay, watch out for the gas usage, they make sure you hit the um, the period in there, your decimal point. So if you need to pause the video to enter in all that data, go ahead and do that, because I'm going to keep going. Let's see, let's clear, nope. Clear that off. Alright. Once you got all your data in there, go back to your main screen of your calculator. And go to second y equals to your stat plot. This is where we went to for our histograms, our box plots, and stuff like that. So in your stat plot, 
you want to go to the first one. So go ahead and press enter when you get here. So that you have this. And go ahead and turn it on. You have to press enter while the cursor is on on so that you actually turn it on. And the first thing here, this is our scatter plot. Okay? Here is our histogram, our box plots, but we're going to stick to this, this first one. This is our scatter plot. So make sure your cursor's on it, press enter to make sure it's selected. And usually we would only have one list that it would ask for. But now it's needed going to ask for two lists for our explanatory variable, which is our degree days, and our response variable, our gas usage, our list two. Now for mark, you really can't see it because when I took the screen capture, there's really a like a little box there, there's a plus sign, and then there's a little point. For your scatter plot, all this is saying is do you want all your points to look like little boxes, little plus signs, or little points? The biggest thing would just be to pick the box here because they're the biggest points and you can see them more easily than these little tiny dots in here. Um, and sometimes these plus signs, if they're really close to each other, they get really clustered in there and you can't tell if there's one in that area or two in that area. So typically we'll just use this as our default one, just that box. So make sure your appropriate lists are in X list and Y list. And after you got that, go to graph and you may or may not see stuff. You may see some of your points, you may not see all of them. The reason for this is your window of your calculator is still set up for the last thing you did with your calculator. So we said to get around that, and again, we're going to be using this button quite a bit, press the zoom button right here in the upper middle, and then just press 9. And that function is for, I don't write in white, 9 if you scroll down to select it, it's zoom stat. And that just means it's going to take the statistics that you've got in your list and it's going to fit it, fit the screen perfectly. So you should then have your nice, lovely looking scatter plot that looks like this. Okay? Now it doesn't look exactly like our scatter plot over here. And why not? Well, look at this. This is more horizontal, this is more widescreen, and this is a lot taller. But if you notice the overall pattern here, this is positive, this is positive. This is fairly linear, fairly linear. Um, there are some clusters, as you can kind of see. You know, you've got some clusters here, some clusters here, and then some clusters up here. And all that really relates to are the seasons of the year. You know, these are your warmer months. Um, here are the months that are, you know, kind of cold that you would start needing to use some gas more and more. And then you have the really cold months, more like, December, January, February, maybe November. All right. So that's how you make your scatter plot. Now, if you're still getting an error, something's wrong, you might just want to press your Y equals button here. And if there is uh, an equation in there, like if you see Y1 equals, and there's something actually in here, some equation, you're going to want to clear it out. If you still have an issue, you just will need to make a note of it um, in your notes right now and say, you know, I tried doing the scatter plot, but something wasn't working. And ask me the next day in class, and we'll get it figured out. Okay? And the last thing we're going to look at is kind of what we just described. We're going to describe the scatter plot. All right, so overall strength. Those points were pretty strong. They were pretty tied into each other. You know, there wasn't a lot of variation in those points. They were all pretty much lined up here. So you could call it strong, you call it moderately strong, very strong, fairly strong, but it's definitely some level of strong. Direction, remember if we were to kind of apply a line to this, it would definitely be having a positive slope. And again, that means as um, average number of heating degree days per day increases, then so does our gas consumption. Okay, The um, colder it gets, basically, remember the higher the numbers you have here, means the further below 65 degrees you are for the month for, of the average. So it's saying the colder you're getting, the more gas you're using. There's a positive relationship there. The shape, again, we just already kind of mentioned, this is fairly linear. 
and then you have to talk about between what two variables. And again, that's your horizontal and your vertical axis labels here. We were talking about the average number of degree days per day and the average amount of natural gas consumed. Now, if you notice, there's extra points in this scatter plot that weren't there before. Okay, we have some extra points. And these lighter points here, the ones that kind of have some spaces in them, some white space in, these represent new data. These represent the gas consumption after the solar panels have been installed. So the circles that are filled in is before, and the circles that are open are after. So you can kind of see here, and this is what we're going to get to later, is kind of applying this line. This line kind of goes with before the solar panels, and this line here is for after the solar panels. And you can see that this line has shrunk down. It went down, meaning we're using less gas. So the final question you might ask yourself is, have the solar panels caused a reduction in gas usage? Well, you can tell, obviously, the answer is yes because otherwise those two lines should be really, really close or on top of each other if it didn't. And you would really start to question solar panels if this line right here was above the other line, that having solar panels caused an increase in gas consumption. You know, then you're, something's definitely off there. Now, is this line underneath so far below this line that you would say, oh my gosh, solar panels are the best, everybody needs to get them? Not really, okay? It definitely helped, but not a lot, okay? And that's a kind of conclusion that you can make here by looking at some scatter plots. And you can combine multiple scatter plots like we did here. Now, I didn't give you the data for after the solar panels were installed, but you could look at a before and after situation and compare them. Um, this is where maybe um, if we went back here, I'm just going to throw this in. Um, some of you might have wondered, you know, we always turn on the first plot. We never turn on the second, third, etc. This might be where uh, plot number one represents our before scatter plot. And if you had data for the after the solar panel part was going, then you could turn on plot two and put a scatter plot of it for, you know, maybe this would have to be list three and list four for that new data. Um, and then whenever you dive into the mark, you definitely want to have the marks be different. Like maybe for the before, maybe you want to use the box. And maybe for the after the solar panels have been installed, you want to use this different symbol, this plus symbol. Just so you can see the difference between the two. Like we could here. How we have filled in circles versus open circles.